7,600 miles and now it comes down to the final five. But as you can see from the images just a few moments ago, it is light winds out there. We knew that Team Brunel and Dongfeng race team were gonna slow down inside the final seven miles and that is exactly what has happened. At their current rate, we could be waiting a while. It could be 45 minutes, it could be an hour before these two teams finally get themselves to the finish line. But rest assured, we know that there is wind at the finish line in Idijay. The question is, which one of these two boats will manage to navigate round the bubble of light winds to the breeze that is waiting for them? Now, the tracker on the website is live. You can follow this approach to the finish line inch by inch if you want to. We're gonna take a little bit of a break now, but we will be back as soon as these boats start moving towards the finish line to find out who is gonna win leg seven of the Volvo Ocean Race. The moment is finally here to welcome the teams to Itajaye for the finish line of leg seven. After over 7,600 mi miles, now is the moment for the teams to finally breathe a sigh of release as land comes into sight and they know that the racing is gonna come to an end, but it is certainly gonna come down to these last few miles. If you've been watching the live images, you'll know that Team Brunel and Dongfong Race Team have been struggling with the light winds. But to help us understand exactly what's going on out there, I've got Conrad Coleman with me now. And Conrad, Brunel in the lead, Dongfong Race Team a little way behind, but a few little tricks just to remain. They've been struggling with this light airs. Well, yes, this bay of, of Itajai is notoriously challenging, that the race has come here three times already, and every single time we've seen that the arrivals have been challenging. I've sailed out of these waters myself, and, um, and it's really challenging. You can see in the left-hand corner of your screen there that lots of, um, lots of hills, and so they're obviously affecting all of the, um, all of the wind around, but most particularly, the, check out the cumulus cloud that is building over the... Um, uh, over, the land, over the land there. Now, what would normally be expecting a bit of a sea breeze here, and so that would mean that as the boats are heading in towards the coastline, that they would normally have the wind behind them on this hot, tropical day. Uh, but the boats have actually been sailing purely upwind, and so um, it, it really sort of defies all logic, meteorologically or human. Uh, but uh, we can see that uh, Team Brunel here finally sailing in a relatively steady six knots and with just a couple of miles to go, they're looking pretty good. They're looking pretty good and they've certainly got a nice welcome reception as well. I'm just trying to identify some of the boats behind them. Uh, a 40 footer just behind and the Volvo Ocean 65 certainly be the biggest boat out in the water at the moment. Let's just talk about some of the sails and some of the ways that they've been uh, making their way to the line. Uh, like you say, the breeze has been a little bit all over, them, uh, all over the place. They parked up, but now however, full main, uh, masthead zero I'm guessing, Everything's looking pretty good. That's right, this is the, the, the Masthead Code Zero, and it, it's an incredibly versatile sail. They're, they've been sailing purely upwind, you know, as close as they can to the wind, uh, when they had sort of two or three knots of wind. Now, 
the, they're sort of reaching, uh, if, if I'm looking at the telemetry uh, correctly, um, they're, they're reaching or almost running here, and so the sail is sort of nicely eased off, but because the boat is going just as fast as the wind at the moment, uh, then they're, they're really in an apparent um, wind angle mode here. So having this big flat sail that's super adaptable uh, is really the weapon in this light and changeable condition. And this moment here that we're seeing with Bauer Becking as the skipper of Team Brunel coming into Itish IA in the lead, this is a crucial moment because, it, well, if you've been following the, the last few legs of the Volvo Ocean Race, you'll know that Team Brunel, they were late to come to the party when the last uh, entries into this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race, and they've struggled to find their form. Now we find them on the most iconic leg through what is surely going to be, uh, in terms of history of the Volvo Ocean Race, one of the biggest tests that the sailors have ever really faced. They've seen them come out on top and looking great. Well, this this leg has been uh, has been tough. It's been brutal, and more than anything, it's been relentless. And so, just the the fact that these teams are having to grind down these last miles is, um, you know. I'm sure for the team it's a welcome change. They're probably all in shorts and t-shirt and uh, they can smell the land um, by now, but, uh, but that passage through the Southern Ocean was absolutely brutal. All of the sailors and indeed the veterans like Bauer Becken have been saying it was one of the worst races in terms of conditions that they had down in the south that they have ever faced down there. And so to have uh, faced off with storms, you know, hurricane force winds, mountainous waves, and then to be drifting in like this, well, it's almost you know, a sad comedy, isn't it? <laughs> and we've got a lot to discuss with the points, uh, th this movement on the scoreboard, but while we've got the helicopter shot at the moment moving around, there's a bit of a two-tone going on with the water going on over there. Uh, I I'm guessing, Conrad, a little bit of a change in the tide, obviously, as we're coming in here into the finish line, we know that things are getting a little bit fruity with the wind, but maybe the current also just having a little bit of an effect. Uh, well, yeah, remember that um, Itajai is, is one of the most important ports in, uh, in Brazil. It's, it's a huge river, and so, you know, as, as befits a Brazilian river that's sort of flowing out of the, um, out of the hills and out of the, the tropical forest, you know, it's bringing a lot of material down with it, and so you're seeing uh, the mix there um, of fresh water versus salt, and indeed the sort of muddy water versus the clear uh, of the Atlantic. Now, as we're just moving around here to see Team Brunel from the far side, what you can see in the background, don't look at the 40-footer with the Itajai spinnaker. They're doing behind a great them, job of advertising for the home port, by the way. They're doing a great job. <laughs> the Dongfeng race team in the distance. This is the team, Charles Cordrelia as skipper, that was hoping to overhaul the Dutch boat and claim the win for leg seven. It certainly doesn't look like that's going to happen. The two boats parked up at times. The Chinese-French team closed down the distance. They were really rocketing them. The only boat that had breeze. But now, as we get near to the finish line, Team Brunel are moving and are managing to hold their distance in front. As we take a look at the, at the virtual eye tracker, you can see the finish line on the left-hand side. Both boats moving well. Seven knots for Team yeah, Brunel. But neither boat is on ley line, so there's still a couple of maneuvers to come. All right, so we know we've got at least one more jibe, uh, potentially two, maybe for Dongfeng Race Team if they want to come through that, that one clean. In this kind of breeze, though, jibing the boat shouldn't be too much of a challenge. Well, you, you say that, but actually, uh, it's really hard driving these big, heavy sails when there's not enough wind to sort of blow them through. Uh, and indeed, the boat is only doing sort of four to seven knots. You, you've got the winds there that's sort of four to five. Um, so I'm just wa watching closely there. We've got, got all of the crew in, um, in Brunel. It looks like they're going for a jibe now. So here we go. So the way that you need to get this massive sail through the jibe is you need to actually furl it. Because if you just ease the sheets off and expect the sail to blow through, well, it's just going to hang there limply. So that's what they're doing now, is, is that they, they uh, furled it up three quarters of the way, and then they can just wait a second for that clue to flick through. Actually, they need it to furl it all the way. And then... Um, and then they're all going to get on the pumps, all on the coffee grinder, to yank on that new sheet and really um, sort of sheet on, uh, on, on, the, on that new jibe. The thing to watch here, though, is in the light conditions, the top of the mainsail will be inverted. Oh, there we go. It just, just pops through. Now, that is, is great because it has saved them from sending a crew member uh, up to the top of the mast to, to sort of kick that through. Uh, in the images that we saw maybe 20, 30 minutes ago, when we first saw the helicopter, we saw that there was actually a crew member standing on the top spreader looking for the wind. Well, he's done a good job because they have maintained their lead and, um, and they were lucky with that, um, with that mainsail pop. It went through cleanly. 
I'm really enjoying watching Team Brunel coming in here because Bauer Becking does, I mean, arguably deserve the win here. They have been in the lead for you know, almost the entirety of this leg, and it certainly has been very, very tough. Dongfeng Race Team have given them a real run for their money in the last few days as we've come in close to Idijai. But now, perhaps the final jibe is completed. We'll get confirmation when we take a look at the 3D in a moment. But look at that, the Soto 40 still on their stern there, a boat made up from uh, local sailors, professional sailors. We've been informed by people in the know. Thank you very much for that. But Team Brunel, they're gonna be doing one more by my eye there, just to come through that line. Yeah, absolutely. And um, just super clean, you know, this, this team has now sailed three, you know, two thirds of the way around the world. Uh, seven legs of the Volvo Ocean Race, and uh, this is a team that has seen lots of changes with its crew as they've gone gone their way around the world. You know, um, that that Bauer Becking did a lot of his recruitment sort of late in the game because his his team was was late uh, coming together, but he actually did it in Bermuda, and so that's why um, why he's primarily got America's Cup sailors on board, uh, despite the fact that he's a, a Volvo veteran, because he was actually skippering. A, a J-class uh, super yacht down in, in Bermuda, and so he he spent plenty of time in the bar sort of picking up his new Volvo crew, and they have really gelled. And, you know, finally he's got his sort of his mix and matches you know come through. He's got the team that he's really happy with. The, uh, most importantly, the rock star sailors that that he's been sailing with have sort of aligned their calendars so they can all stay on board the boat, and um, and this is really the fruits of the fruits of their labor. You know, for a veteran, he would have liked to have been in this position earlier in the race, uh, but uh, it must be incredibly satisfying to take out the leg of the race. And incredibly satisfying for the fans as well. We've got some uh, messages of support and well wishes coming in as well on the, on the comments on this video. A lot of people describing this basically a hard fought win and a well-deserved win as well. And we couldn't agree with you more. Now, there's an interesting moment here because in the office when we were describing uh, what this result could do with the, the bonus point for being the first around Cape Horn, with the bonus point for the leg win, and then double points on their position as well. This really pushes Team Brunel up. In fact, it could see them go to third overall on the overall rankings. And while we were exclaiming how, just how incredible that was, that leap up, somebody in the office did point out that this was a similar story to the last edition. Team Brunel finding their gears in the early first legs, but then they arrived and they arrived with power. Uh, well, well, yeah, absolutely, and we've actually, you know, because we're always suckers for a good story, we, 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 <laughs> we, we quite like the idea of a late charge by the wily veteran, and this is certainly what it, what it uh, appears to be. Um, you know, Brunel, you know, remember in the last race, all of the noise was about um, Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing and Dongfeng Race Team, and, uh, well, well, we'll talk about Charles Codroli and his team uh, shortly, but uh, they, they dropped their rig on this leg last time, they got themselves out of contention. That allowed uh, Bauer Becken and, and uh, Brunel last time around to make it onto the second step of the podium overall. And, well, wouldn't it be great if they were on a similar kind of charge now? Well, now look at this from the track here that we can see from the virtual eye tracker. A, a few more jibes than arguably is needed. I, I, I'm pretty confident we've got that finish line in just the right position. And if we have, then Team Brunel are putting in a few extra jibes just to take a little bit of pressure. But we'll see from confirmation as we go back to the live images in just a moment. This is Team Brunel at the moment with our rib chasing them. It looks like the crew getting ready in the middle of the boat. But no, there's hugs all round. I think they have crossed the line. I think that is Team Brunel safely across the line. They certainly look to me like they're celebrating now. And that is Team Brunel taking the win. Leg seven, the most iconic leg in this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. Certainly the most brutal, the most relentless, the hardest test of any of our teams. And Bauer Becking and Team Brunel have arrived. Well, a bonus point for Cape Horn, a bonus point for being first across the line, and now double points for their leg position. This could see them moving up into third overall. Dongfeng race team behind them in second place. That'll be a good result as well. But to hold off the Chinese team here, who we know are so fast, this is a real confidence boost for Bauer Becking. Or did he know it was going to happen all along? <laughs> well, uh, you never know until it's over. And, and um, you know, all of these uh, crew members on, on board have enough experience to, to know that. And so that's why they waited for their celebration until the very last second. Um, but, but just to talk about the points here, if, if I may, 
uh, we've, we've, got, we've been cooking up a number of different scenarios here in the office, and basically scenario number one is the one that seems to have come into place. So we've got Brunel winning the league. So, bonus point on, on Cape Horn, as you said, and then there's a bonus point for the win, plus uh, two times seven points uh, for, for the leg win. So we've got 14, 15, 16 points for the leg. That takes them from sixth overall to third. And this is really, really incredible stuff. You know, the, to be able to go from you know, <clears throat> zero to hero, if you'll um, a, excuse the, the hackneyed expression, uh, it's just awesome. Absolutely fantastic. And, and really a massive, massive re reward for the, the team. Um, at this point. And I'd just like to point out the fact that they couldn't have waited for their, their surge any better because this was the double points league uh, with that Cape Horn bonus as I, as I pointed out. But if they do this again, if they manage to win the next double points league, and remember across the Atlantic from Newport, Rhode Island to Cardiff in the United Kingdom, well, you know, they could be putting some real pressure on the top two teams in this race as well, particularly with Matt Frey so far down in the rough, as the, as the golfers would say, um, on this league. So now with Brunel across the line, we are back on board with Dong Fong race team, and you can see Charles Gaudrier. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of smile or not he has when, when crossing the line. He's somebody who wears his, his heart on his sleeve. Um, just dialing, playing with the piano there in front of the, um, in front of the wheel tells me that they might be prepping for, for a jibe, maybe releasing the keel, uh, the keel down and, and prepping his team uh, for a jibe. It'll be interesting to see whether they go to the same kind of ley line as, uh, as Brunel, or now that the pressure's off, they can sort of pick a spot um, uh, more, more befitting. Now the breeze is coming up here. We just saw eight knots of boat speed for Dongfong Racing. That's certainly the best boat speed that we've been seeing in the last six or seven hours. But a too big late. patch. <laughs> uh, too late. Yeah, That's absolutely brutal. right. Yeah, too late. However, I think Charles Quadrilla and his team here will be very happy about this. You've got to remember the last time that we saw a Cape Horn rounding for Dongfong Racing, the last edition of the race, they had a piece of their master missing, a very crucial part, and that saw them in real trouble here. And really, I mean, arguably, uh, scupper their chances of winning the edition overall. I'm sure the fans of Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing will disagree with that, and as well you might. But Charles Cordrillia knows how brutal a major piece of gear failure can be, and he has done very well here, nursing his crew, looking after the boat, knowing when to push, knowing when to hold back, and a second place on this leg. I mean, just to finish it, mm is a real achievement, just to look after your team and to ha have that moment of you all achieving this. But second place, good points on the scoreboard. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure that the, 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 the French and, and Chinese sailors on board will, will likely disagree with me, but I could almost say that a second place here is as good as a win. Because in this scenario of, of points that we've been talking about, if Mafre stays behind turn the tide on plastic, it will actually be a win for them because they will take over the overall leadership in, this, in the race, taking it off the Spanish shoulders and securing overall leadership by one single solitary painstaking point. <laughs> so if that's not a tough, tight uh, race, the, you know, the Volvo Ocean race, I don't know what is. Um, but, but you're exactly right. In Charles Coudrelier, when he was doing his interviews at the, uh, at the start of the race when he was still in Auckland, he said uh, that this was the, the leg that demanded the most respect from the sailors and the skippers. And, and as you say, this was the leg that they, they maybe pushed too hard or maybe they just had bad luck with their gear, but they broke last time. This time he said, absolutely, we need to know when to push, when to hold back, when to look at the big picture. And with the big picture in mind and, and potentially taking over the, uh, the overall lead in, in the coming days when Matt Frey finally make it across the line, well, I, I think that this is absolutely job done. You know, it's a sign of maturity in the skipper. He's now a second time skipper in the, in the Volvo Ocean race, and the way that he's able to place the cursor in terms of risk and reward uh, is really admirable. Our Dong Fong race team going for the first of their, what should be the last two jibes. We're just having a, a zoom in on the crew. Charles Cordrelia on the left, hand wheel, Jack Boutel just in front of him, Mary Rue with the red top just on the aft grinder as now the boat settles back on the other jibe. And one more jibe to go for the Chinese team before they come through the line. It's a second place, 
It's not the result that Charles Codrillia was hoping for in the last few days, certainly when those miles came down to barely one mile between him and the Dutch boat. However, as Conrad was saying, it is certainly a result to be proud of. And the masthead Code Zero now out and full of the breeze, the breeze which is freshening all the time as we get closer to the line here. We are just waiting to see if we can hear from the man at the moment, Bauer Becking, the skipper of Team Brunel, having crossed the line and having won their first leg of this Volvo Ocean race and potentially starting their move up the overall scoreboard. This could see them move up into third place overall. And then beyond that, well, who knows? We've seen some big movements as the legs tick by. We know we've got well, one more double points leg coming up. That's right. It's all about the, no, excuse me, I'll try that again. Strategic use of, of their resources and, uh, and where they place their efforts. Now, one thing that we can't talk about as we, as we look at this a little bit of uh, scuffed paint on the leech there of the mainsail, um, and we'll be doing some, some sort of sleuthing to try and sort this, this story out for you. But one of the things that's not clear, even to us, but also to you sail fans, um, sailing fans, is what is the strategy that these sailors are using when it comes down to the sails. And so that could be um, the fact that Brunel has uh, most notably put their new mainsail on leaving Hong Kong. So that means that their mainsail has now gone from Hong Kong across the equator down to New Zealand and then finally through the Southern Ocean. And so we, we've been sort of teasing a little bit about this idea of a late charge by Brunel, but could that be premature? Because they've put their final mainsail on the boat before the halfway mark and maybe that, that's going to be tired uh, and sort of losing shape and, uh, and crucially drive when it comes to the last uh, sprint across the Atlantic or indeed the last sprint through Europe. And so um, I'll be doing my best, dear, dear viewer, to, to bring you some details as to how these sailors are putting it together because it'll be interesting to see if Dongfang race team, second now uh, on this leg, but first overall, if they come now and whip out a new sail wardrobe, well, the rest of the fleet's going to be on, on, put on notice, isn't, aren't they? And it, it's interesting as well. I, I think very interesting to talk about the sails, but also talk about how well teams like Team Brunel come into this race slow, have now managed to find their speed and catch up with the other boats. And I believe now we can hear from Bauer Becking, skipper of Team Brunel. We can see him now helming the boat. Bauer, what an unbelievable leg, what an unbelievable test of, of all of the sailors of the Volvo Ocean Race Leg 7 has been. Welcome to Irijay. Congratulations. Yes, it has been an epic uh, leg. Thank you very much for, uh, for the congratulations. But I think uh, we're a little sad in our heart, very sad in our heart. We know why. Uh, John Fisher's loss uh, sits very deep with us. But of course, uh, Spotify, uh, we sell the very nice leg, so we're confident with that. And an amazing achievement and an amazing opportunity for you as skipper to feel well, rightly proud of, of your team and your efforts to come through what has been unbelievably testing conditions. Yes, well, that's one of the things that Brunel always said, engineering future. And uh, we've got a young of young guys and they showed, I think, the old foxes in this leg that they are the future. And uh, I'm really proud of uh, how they uh, improved over the last couple of months and just kept believing in, the, in our own team. So happy chappies right now. Happy chappies and also <laughs> a very speedy boat as well. Do you think the other competitors, I mean, they should be worried about you now. Team Brunel, they found their form. You guys are here. Well, yeah, of course, uh, that was always one of the things when we left in Auckland, we said we should uh, aim for, uh, for the maximum. That's, of course, first, because then uh, we, we will most likely be on the overall leaderboard in the top three. And uh, it's from now on, it will be just chipping away. We've seen stranger things happening in the past in this race, so uh, I think we're in great shape for uh, going to the finish in The Hague. Oh, Bowie, uh, once again, congratulations. Just finishing this leg is a, a major achievement. And to watch you guys sail with, with, with such, such power and such speed, it really was impressive. We've got so many fans from around the world, not least from your home country as well. I wonder if you can say something to your Dutch fans in your native tongue. Yeah, it's fantastic with everybody. Of course, first of all, a big thank you to our sponsors and our family but as well, of course, all, uh, all our uh, supporters we have. Albi.
Bauer, we were just seeing you maneuver your way down the river, but I'm wondering if you have a message uh, in Dutch for your fans. Ja, beste, beste fans van Team Brunel. Uh, we hebben een, een epic lek gehad, maar ik denk dat we onwijs trots kunnen zijn. En uh, ik dank jullie heel hartelijk voor jullie support. De mensen zijn in ons bij, we geloven. En dat is iets uh, wat toch goud waard is voor ons, uh, voor ons team. Dus uh, we gaan blijven ons best doen. En uh, er is nog alles mogelijk, maar dit was natuurlijk een, een heerlijke overwinning. Bowie, once again, congratulations to you and your crew. Well done for all your hard work and welcome to Irijai. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. What a charming guy all the way to the end. Bauer Becking, the skipper of Team Brunel. Well, rightly proud, but also relieved to see leg seven concluded. As he said, you know, the loss of John Fisher leaving an indelible mark on all the action that we've been seeing uh, of leg seven. But this is what these sailors love to do. They are here to race. They are here to compete against some of the best of the world. And for, for almost every one of these sailors out here on the water today, this was their, their, their life dream to be out here racing. And for Dong Fong race team, things are going very well. A second place, another strong finish. Now, we always get a little bit accused here of talking about the two red boats, but there are two big powerhouses in this race, or certainly there have been. Mafre and Dongfon Race Team, and I know that Charles Cordrelia, the skipper of Dongfon Race Team, will be acutely aware of where Mafre are right now, several places behind. Uh, yes, yes. It, it's a little bit of a case of, you know, the king is dead, long let the king, because, you know, we're, we're talking about the sort of change of leadership here, potentially a change of era uh, between the two red boats, uh, because getting, uh, getting Team X and Rebel as they roll into another jibe here, let's just watch that. As they, if, what's crucial now is, is that we've got just a few hundred meters before Dong Fong race team cross the line and, and secure this, uh, this second place. But I must, must not uh, sort of get, get too carried away here because the race is still on. And those fans of, that are watching this right now whether Charles Cordelier has a smile on his face in five days' time is totally dependent upon Simeon Tenpont getting his team across the line in third place and De Cafari being able to stick it to the, to the Spanish until uh, this, uh, this arrival here. If those two boats cross the line before the next red boat, before the Spanish Matt Frey is able to cross the line, then this boat here, Charles Cordelier, uh, second time now, uh, Volvo Ocean Race skipper will take the overall lead. So this team has done their absolute best. They've sailed a clean leg. I th looking at the boat now and also from the blogs that we've been reading, very little breakdown. Uh, the team gave it, their, gave it their all. They looked after the boat. The boat looked after them. But now th the fate is out of their hands. Now it comes down to how the other boats further down the, the rankings will sail these next few days. Oh, well, here comes Dong Fong Race Team across the finish line, second place for Charles Cordrelia through the Southern Ocean, up north to Brazil, and then the finish line in Irijai welcomes them in in a beautiful sunny sky. 7,600 miles of some of the biggest tests of any of these sailors have seen. We've seen cold temperatures, we've seen unbelievable conditions, rough sea states, high winds. Dongfong race team now can see that all behind them. Charles Cordrelia crosses the line to take second place in leg seven. And as you say here, Conrad, I mean, we are slightly over the halfway point now in terms of the Volvo Ocean Race. We are starting to watch more and more on the overall scoreboard. But at this point, if the boats stay with where they are, suddenly at the front, everything gets closer. Earlier on, we were talking about Mafre being able to stretch out in front. It's almost a restart on the overalls. It is, it is. And frankly, I would not like to be uh, in the shoes or flip-flops or bare feet of the, of the sailors right there, right now. Because if you can imagine how tired, how fatigued you are, just the, the fact that you've got months of racing in your arms and your legs and in your sun, you know, we've been seeing, you know, bloodshot eyes and puffy faces um, all the way through, through the fleet. And so if you can imagine that, that all of that work has almost been for nothing. You've got to restart now after the halfway point is just absolutely incredible. As a sailing fan, well, frankly, there's nothing better. 
as a sailor, I pity them. That's going to be brutal. But just to, to talk about how tight it is at the front. Obviously, just a few minutes between first and second, but these two boats have sailed an absolute blinder. They've been sort of basically in each other's pockets all the way through, and they finished just minutes apart. We'll, we'll get the final uh, finishing order, to, well, order you can see, but uh, finishing delta within just a few minutes. But, but I was doing the statistics just before we came on, uh, on air, and Dong Fong race team sailed 16 miles more than Team Brunel. 16 out of 7,770 for Team Brunel, 7,786 for Dong Fong Race Team. Now it's just a few minutes in there and just a few miles. It is absolutely incredible. And in terms of, of absolute speed, well, it was just yesterday that Dong Fong Race Team, as they were pouring on the coals to try and bring back the Flying Dutchman just at the last minute, they did their fastest 24-hour run of the entire race, just yesterday, of 528.57 nautical miles. So that's about a 22-knot average. On the side of the Dutchman, they did 524 miles, or a 21.8 <laughs> uh, average. So these, you know, these two boats were absolutely matched. They were going jibe for jibe all the way from um, from Cape Horn, and um, it's it's absolutely unique. You know that nowhere else do you see these tight finishes uh, after nearly 8,000 miles of ocean racing. The Volvo Ocean Race is something that is absolutely unique when it comes to the sport and uh, truly deserves its title as, as one of the pinnacles of the sport. It has been absolutely incredible to see just how closely these boats have been coming in together. I mean, Dong Fong Racing here, truly, we did not know which way this leg was going to go until, I would say, 40 minutes before they crossed the line with the light patches on there. Dong Fong Racing certainly well within range catch a little puff and roll over the top of them, you can be assured that Bauer Becking was not relaxed all the way through that moment, up until he had the breeze in his sails and he had the finish line maybe one jibe away from him. He was still a little bit nervous about seeing the Chinese team breathing down his neck. But first for Bauer Becking is a great result for the Dutch team. And second for Dongfeng race team is a very strong finish as well. And you can see on the bottom of your screen at the moment, we have got Team Brunel finished, Dong Fong Race Team finished, and then Team Axonobel, quite a long way back, 260 nautical miles. Turn the tide on plastic even further back, 700 nautical miles, and then Mafre a little way back from them. So we're going to see these two, two teams across the line and then to the dock and get some reactions from the sailors. But we have a long way to go before we finally see how all the scores will go. But for now, though, we can talk to Charles Cordrelia. Uh, skipper of Dongfeng Race Team on the helm. Charles, we can see you there helming in the Chinese boat and congratulations, a fight all the way to the finish. But what an unbelievable leg this has been. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, Charles. We can hear you. Hello, hello. There's a little bit of a delay on the line between uh, you guys hello, hello. in Brazil and us, but congratulations from everybody here in Alicante. Well done. If you can, I think I understood, but I don't think the end of the question. Uh, it's a question. I don't know if you hear me, but me, I hear, does not hear you anymore. Uh, Charles, we, 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 the connection is not very good. I'm just wondering if you could sum up the moment for your team after such a, a long coupe, and grueling leg. Je ne plus là. We're going to come back to Charles Cordrelli, as you can hear. The connection, not great. Dongfeng race team just come across the finish line and, uh, well, sometimes your priority is not to work out how to make uh, the phone connection good, but rather to get yourself safely onto the shore and start the celebrations and also the reunion with your friends and family. And as we were hearing from Bauer Becking earlier, 
Stepping onto the dock after leg seven is even more poignant for what all these sailors and indeed the sailing community have had to come to terms with after the loss of John Fisher from Sun Hung Kai Scallywag. I, I can tell you while we have a little bit of a moment here that Sun Hung Kai Scallywag along with Vestas 11th Hour Racing have retired from this leg. Both boats are, are safely ashore. As to their next moves and as to what they are determined to do in terms of rejoin the race or their plans, no news yet. But when that decision is made and when they've communicated it to us, we will let you know. For now, though, it's Team Brunel across the line making their way into the dock and Dong Fong race team in second place. We're going to just see if we can get Charles Cordrelia again on the line. Charles, apologies for the poor connection, but we really want to hear just what this second place means to you. Uh, it's a fantastic result for us. Uh, of course, we have dreamed about uh, the first one uh, when we saw Brunel, but uh, Brunel did a fantastic leg and I think deserved his first place. He has been uh, the leader in the south and this leg is about the south. But uh, yeah, it's a fantastic result for us. Uh, it's, we managed to come back to the map free after a lot of frustration on the previous leg where each time we lost some point stupid, this time we managed to keep them back and they are far away. And we have a chance, if turn the tide is managed to say we have a chance to take the lead. So for us, it's amazing. But the first thing uh, is amazing is to finish this leg uh, with uh, all the team members on board. Of course, I'm thinking about uh, what happened to Scaliwag. Uh, this is what can happen to Cero. We know about that, but we are all scared about that. It doesn't happen very often, but when it's happened, it's dramatic to, to lose life in, in this condition. And I can't. Of course, right now I'm going, my family is not here, but uh, most of the time when I arrive at the dock, my family is here and I can't, I mean, it's, it's difficult to imagine that my boat could arrive without me and my kids waiting and I'm not here, I'm thinking to John Fisher and I'm so sad for his family and it's so sad, I'm so sad for uh, all Scaliwag team and David, which is a fantastic and funny guy uh, we discovered during this race. Uh, and they were, as I say, they were the smile of the race. He has always a good joke. He's very funny, uh, good spirit. And that was a, a fantastic team. And they lost one of them. And, and uh, yeah, very, very dramatic situation. But as I say, it's part of our sport. It's a, an extreme sport. Sometimes it happens. And it's difficult to accept it, but it's like I, uh, compared to mountain. I know I did a lot of mountain and I lost a lot of friends in the mountain. I, and even the best climber, it happens. But that's why we are here to push the limits. That's what we are looking for, going to sail in this area. And it happens. Unfortunately, it happens. And it's always too much, but it's like that. So I think about John and I, we can give all the team, give a certain place to him and think about him and uh, his family. and. Here we are. Well, thank you, Charles. I, I know your comments reflect the, the wider feelings of all the sailors on the fleet. And well done in, in this leg. I know for you as a skipper, always a proud moment of your crew. And you have so many French fans watching you at this moment. I wonder if you'd say something to them in French. Uh, uh, yes, uh, in French, I don't know, you want me to speak in French or in English, sorry? In French, please, Charles. We have so many people from France watching you, cheering you across you the anymore. line. Sorry? Charles, we're going to come back to you in just a moment. We're going to meet you on the dock. We'll let you take the boat in. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Well. There we have it, Team Brunel across the line in first place, Don Fong Race Team across the line in second place. We're all the way here in uh, Alicante in Spain. They're all the way in Itajaí, Brazil. So apologies for the connection and for the delay on the line. But it's always worth to hear from the sailors and from the crews as they cross the line. And uh, as Charles Cordrelia said just a moment ago, obviously, leg seven with the loss of John Fisher from Sun Hunkai Scallywag really has left its mark on, on everybody's feelings here. And uh, it would be impossible to call these boats across the line without reflecting on what this moment means to all the sailors and uh, all the fans of the race as well. And take another chance here just to say um, 
it's been amazing to receive all the uh, heartbreaking uh, condolences coming into the John Fisher's friends and family. Bauer Becking now with leg seven behind him on the dock here in Idishai. And as skipper, he can feel rightly proud of well, the performance, but also just how well this team has coped with the relentless conditions and just the never ending tests. All the way through to the line, the Chinese team, Dong Fong race team, hot on his heels, only a few miles behind just as he crossed the line. But what a difference, Connor, we're seeing shorts and t-shirts. I mean, that's where we started in Auckland, but it, it didn't stay that way. No, it certainly didn't. Very, very quickly as they dived south into the well, the roaring 40s and then into the screaming 50s and then almost down into, into the shrieking 60s, I think. You know, the, 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 the ice uh, exclusion zone was so far south this year that that was one of the contributing reasons that, that these guys got um, so pummeled and so cold this time. Eighth time around the world. Good to see you here, man. How was it? You know, they, they asked me to to make you a question, but I will ask it for myself because I saw that you were chiming off first and then when you came back, you were five, 50 miles ahead. What do you see that the competition did not say? Well, we've got to know again, we've got to thank Thomas as well, so he's a listener. Yeah, I'm having a fantastic job the whole way, so I don't know if you can prove myself fantastic. Uh, sometimes very conservative, but uh, the new as well wanted to push, and I think it's uh, quite a big credit to Peter Burling. He's pushing really hard. I'm more the guy sometimes rolling him down, but uh, I think he had the right mix over here, and it uh, comes to a good result. That's what I asked him for how it was, and then they gave him a chance to the north, e voltaram na frente da, do resto da flotilha, ele disse que tem também um navegador que já fez isso oito vezes, então ele graças ao navegador, ao Pete Burning também, que forçou muito o barco e toda a tripulação, então agradecendo a, a tripulação. You've been doing this for 30 years now, and of course South and Ocean Lags are always tough, but this one was especially tough. What was different about this lag this time? Well, I think the big difference was compared to all other legs I've done before. We had uh, 30 knots here the whole way. We left off and then 30 knots up went. We had one little transition from there on, the just came on. Very, very windy and uh, lots of wind. And uh, yeah, you can just see probably looking a bit weird and a little tired. <laughs> E assim, já tem um tempo aí, ele que vem fazendo isso aí há 30 anos já. Então, ele, o que tem de diferente, já passou, claro, nas pernas do Mar do Sul algumas vezes. E o que foi diferente dessa vez, ele disse que dessa vez tinha muito mais vento, eles já saíram com muito vento, vento na cara, e vieram o tempo inteiro com muito vento e muita onda. That's it. Thank you, Bowie. So, Bowie. We're going to talk to Pete Burning from New Zealand. Pete, welcome to Itajaí. You know what you said you were excited to get into the Southern Ocean. Oh, so, hey, Pete. You know what you said you were excited to get into the Southern Ocean. So, what is the feeling now? Was everything that you said? Yeah, well, uh, definitely wasn't excited then, but. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, how tired we are as a crew now shows us how tough this league was and uh, it's been, um, you know, incredibly grinding on everyone and uh, just that the way everyone kept fighting, kept pushing on and, uh, you know, eventually managed to just hang off, uh, hold off Don Feng for the win is, uh, you know, incredibly pleasing. Obviously a really sad time for the race with um, everything going on with Scallywag and uh, a lot of mixed emotions about that, but, um, yeah, we're really pleased to be on shore now. É o que eu pedi né? A Nova Zelândia disse para a equipe da Volvo Chão Verde que estava muito ansioso, né? Muito feliz para cruzar essa etapa. E eu perguntei como é que ele está sentindo agora, se foi como ele esperava. Ele disse que foi bastante difícil, que foi uma etapa muito é, complicada por causa do clima, enfim, por causa das situações, mas que agora ele está tranquilo que vocês estão aqui. Ah, uh, tell us about the atmosphere on board when you team crossed the finish line. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it was uh, probably a little bit of relief in the end, um, and it's been something that we've been leading this race for a, a very long time, and there's been a lot of times where the breeze has shut down, and, you know, the guys behind have caught up some pretty serious miles, and uh, it was uh, pretty stressful that last couple of hours we were becalmed, and then, uh, you know, finally when the sea breeze came in, and 
That was a nice uh, little joint across the finish line. So now everyone um, just delighted to take the win here, but I'm uh, really happy. Eu perguntei para ele como é que foi a sensação dele e da equipe ao cruzarem a linha de chegada aqui em Itajaí. Ele falou que depois de tudo que eles passaram, claro, uh, alegria, muitos sorrisos e agora eles estão bem por estar aqui. Thank you, Pete. Welcome to Itajaí. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Now we'll have the prize giving ceremony from the mayor of Itajaí and the gift. Peter Burling and uh, Bauer Becking, skipper and crew member of Team Brunel and Peter Burling is normally a man of, of slightly muted emotions, shall we say, but there was a big smile on his face. It is a big relief to get to shore after this many miles, this many days, and this many tests uh, after all those miles behind you. Oh, the welcome yeah. relief. Well, yeah, absolutely. You can see that they're, um, the nerves were pretty sort of ragged and uh, been pushed all the way to the end. There was uh, certainly required all of the intensity and the experience that they have on board. Well, there's the leg winner's trophy held aloft by Bauer Becking. He's been waiting a long time to get his hands on one of these in this edition of the race. I mean, do not rule out Bauer Becking as a skipper. This is his eighth Volvo Ocean race, and he's come second three times, third twice, got five in total, five podium finishes. But for this edition, he seems to be a little bit late to the speed. However, we've still got enough of the race left, and if this form is anything to go by, we could start seeing this team moving up and really challenging the domination of Mafre and Dongfong race team just ahead of them. Well, Nina Curtis on the left-hand side, just holding the trophy at the moment, silver medalist in the match racing. New crew member for this leg, and what a first leg to jump on for. Well, that's right. You know, she, she really struck me in the first videos that came off this boat. You know, just this sort of bubbly enthusiasm going, woohoo, here we are, let's go. And you know, little did she know what exactly was waiting for her in you know, the, uh, the Southern Ocean really had a, um, a passage of legend in terms of the Volvo Ocean race uh, waiting for her. And, um, uh, you know, if this is your first, uh, maybe she'll, she'll stay on, but if this was your first and only leg of the Volvo Ocean race, well, this is really the one that you would take. And this is the one that you're going to be telling your grandkids around, about. And this is, the, this is the one that certainly you know whether you can go to these kind of extremes and, and, and put yourself against these kind of tests and... Uh, whether you can come out still enjoying it and still loving this sport because we really have seen these sailors push all the way to the limit. And as Bauer Beckham was saying there, the, the wind speed, 30 knots. And by his recollection, it didn't seem to dip below that from the start all the way through to the finish. We did get a one of two lighter patches, but we can forgive him for ignoring all of those because it certainly has been pretty full on, pretty full ball all the way. So Team Brunel on the dock. An incredible leg seven, and they have really shown all the other teams just how to sail fast all the way through many, many miles of incredible wind and waves. I suppose we're going into the most iconic, probably the, one of the more gruelling uh, legs of the race. We know the boats now so well, so we will push 100%. So that's, uh, that's the good news. We've been going very nicely the last couple of days. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, J2 had a, a hole in it um, from an original repair that we did uh, last week and it's now back up in the air and fingers crossed it will get us to the finish. Well, that was the leg as through the eyes of the crew on Team Brunel winning leg seven, Bauer Becking. Very pleased to be lifting that trophy and collecting, well, all the points. The, the bonus point for rounding Cape Horn first, the bonus point for the leg win, and then the double points for their position as well. And as you saw, some of the most iconic shots that we've seen on this leg has been the Cape Horn rounding. This is, really is a big moment in any sailor's life. Rounding Cape Horn puts you into a very elusive club. And our media team were down there to capture this moment with the full assistance of the Chilean Navy. It's really their backyard. They were down there to keep an eye on the boats, plus put our camera operators in the air and up close to the boats to get those amazing shots and when our crew went out to join the Chilean Navy on their long journey they got a full tour of just what life is like in such a remote place. Ustedes llegaron hoy a Puerto Williams, el lunes 26 de marzo. Mañana eh, va a llegar el buque OPB Fuente Alba, que es un buque eh, de eh, mayores características para poder navegar al sur del Cabo de Hornos. Uh -huh. eh, se van a embarcar mañana y van a andar a bordo aproximadamente entre 3 a 4 días. Eh, van a ir un poco más al sur, a la isla de Diego Ramírez, donde van a hacer el relevo de la dotación del de faro que está allí. Después van a hacer, van a, eh, van a poder filmar toda la travesía de los veleros a través del Cabo de Hornos y espero que crucen con horas luz. Pues nos vemos mañana, comandante. Ok, mañana encantado, nos vemos en el muelle y que les vaya muy bien. Muy bien, muchas gracias. This is our home. Yep. We are already free here to take coffee and watch TV wherever we want. And now uh, he will show us where can we move and film and we will go to the bridge and blah, blah, blah. The uh, captain of the ship, my name is uh, Commander Schneid captain of the uh, Marinero Fantealba. The first objective we have is uh, to arrive uh, to the island of uh, Diego Ramirez, mm -hmm. uh, where we will be providing them with all the elements, to let them survive for at least six months. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that purpose, uh, an, an helicopter will be joining us tomorrow morning. I mm -hmm. uh, hope to do this uh, on Wednesday tomorrow, yeah. mm -hmm. very quickly, uh, before noon. And after that, we will be sailing toward Cape Horn where we, where we will be waiting for uh, the uh, yachts that are competing in the Volvo Ocean Race. Mm -hmm. And we will stay there and give them security. And probably we could film it with the help of the helicopter, no? I hope so. Yeah. Yes, I hope so. We will, uh, yeah, we will uh, receive the helicopter tomorrow yeah. and we will, uh, I hope you can uh, board the helicopter yeah. with, your, with your camera <laughs> and... Uh, of course, <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and, and I shot very good pictures of uh, because it's very iconic. The Cape Horn yeah. is uh, one I think is, is for any seaman is one of the most iconic uh, uh, places in the world. So uh, I hope we can we can get uh, good shots uh, and good film on them. Comenzará navegación oceánica, donde se experimentarán fuertes balances y cabeceos experimentando olas sobre los 5 metros. Mira, vamos al faro Diego Ramírez, cuatro personas 
y por esta vez van acompañando por unos días unos científicos de la Universidad de Magallanes. Eh, vamos a estar cuatro meses, si todo sale bien, llevamos víveres para cinco, alimentación para cinco. Bueno, este es el paro importante, debido a que eh, está justo en medio del paso de ahí. Vivir en la isla es sacrificado, porque estar lejos de tu familia, ¿no? pero es una experiencia inolvidable, sobre todo en la, en la parte donde estamos. Obviamente por ese motivo falta. Lo más complicado acá es cuando uno se enferma, ¿no? porque cuando tú te enfermas, eh, hacen un movimiento grande y si las condiciones a veces no lo permiten. No permiten, por ejemplo, el helicóptero ahora está operando, pero más al invierno no va a poder operar así como, como acá. Entonces tú tienes que, que, que tener mucho cuidado de no enfermarte, como me pasó a mí, que me tuvieron que evacuar. El helicóptero se dio dos horas para acá y dos horas para allá. Oh, there we go, some of the incredible lengths that we have gone to to get you the images with the help of the Chilean Navy. But now is much easier. Dongfeng Race Team just off the dock here and the finish line in Irijayi. And we will be hearing from the skippers and the crew in just a moment. Charles Cordelia just pacing back along the deck at the moment. The lines have been thrown over, the fenders are out, the boat is safely attached to the dock. And there we can see friends and families reunited here in Irishai. Dongfeng race team, a second on leg seven. Now we are going to talk to Unbelievable journey comes to an end. Welcome back to Irishai. Hello. Hello. It's me. Hello. I am Shah. Uh, that was a battle all the way to the finish line. How do you feel now arriving in the second place in the Jain, the most difficult leg? Uh, it's a very fantastic place for Dong Fong Race Team because a uh, very good operation for the ranking and uh, it's uh, probably the toughest leg I've never done in my life so I'm very happy to be here and, um, and to have finished because it was really, really hard and uh, all the team is back. The boat is in good shape and a good position, so that's a good result for Dong Fong Race Team for sure. Uh, Chao, let's say you broke your mask before Cape Horn, and that was a very difficult, that very difficult time for your team. Was that on your mind as you were going through the Southern Ocean this time? Yes, of course, because uh, it's my first time I do this leg, and uh, the first two times I broke my mask. And uh, Pascal Bidigori, our navigator, who is on board, also try two times to do this leg, and he never finished it, and always break a mask. So we were thinking we were the black, who was a black bird, or the black, and I was afraid. So it's a, for us, it's a victory to arrive here with a, a, a one mast and pay escape on for Pascal for the first time after many tries. <laughs> Tem que deixar, eu perguntei para ele como é que, é, que na, a, na Volvo passada, né? Ele quebrou o mastro ali e eu perguntei para ele se ele pensou nisso dessa vez quando ele cruzou o Cabo Horn e ele me disse que sim, claro, porque ele só tem uh, um mastro e que ficou preocupado, mas que deu tudo certo. That's it. Now we're going to talk to Caroline Brown. Vamos falar com a Caroline, ela que foi criada no Brasil, sabe falar português. She was raised in Brazil, she can talk Portuguese. Caroline, é, como você se sente de estar tá chegando no Brasil dessa forma? Acho que foi um pouco duro dessa vez, né? Claro, essa etapa no Oceano Sul é sempre muito, muito dura e é por isso que a chegada em Itajaí é sempre ainda melhor, porque a gente enfrentou muitas dificuldades, é, mas chegando aqui em Itajaí e o pessoal aqui recebendo a gente, 
É, nós estamos muito orgulhosos do segundo lugar e vamos comemorar bem aqui em Itajaí. Maravilha. This wasn't your first time in, in the Southern, Southern Ocean and on the Horn, but how was it this time? What was different on this land? Ah, eu acho que essa etapa, para mim, para mim foi a terceira vez que eu rondei Cabo de Horno, mas eu acho que foi a terceira vez foi a, a mais difícil. É, os ventos muito, muito fortes. A gente começou na Nova Zelândia com ventos muito fortes. Foi só aqui na final, na reta final em Itajaí, que a gente teve vento fraco, mas sempre vento muito, muito forte. A gente desceu até quase 60 sul, então, grau sul, então também com muito, muito frio. Então, é para ficar fisicamente, mentalmente sanos, é, é, foi, foi difícil. Obrigado. Thank you, Caroline. You want it in English now? Thank you. Carolyn Brower and Charles Cordrelia, crew member and skipper from Don Fon Race Team, and Bauer Becking, the skipper of Team Brunel, there on the dock side to welcome them in and presumably to congratulate them on a very hard fought battle. Don Fon Race Team certainly made Bauer Becking work pretty hard right the way to the line. Well, it really, you know, validated. If if you run away from the league and uh, and you've got a five or six hundred mile lead, you know, it's no fun. So, frankly, I, I think that um, that Bauer Beck in there was congratulating, but also maybe thanking her because uh, you know getting pushed all the way to the line is uh, is the best way to talk about the fact that uh, it's a really level playing ground with these one design boats, but also all of the teams are are, um, are really incredible. A really incredible, really incredible performances that we've been seeing here over the last few days. And Dong Fong race team rightly proud of a second place finish. As Charles Cordrelia was saying, this is the first time that he has completed this leg and what a leg it's been. It is the toughest leg, but it's also probably the best leg out of the whole race. Ready, let's go. Yeah, first 24 hours is pretty brutal actually. We are getting fast to going to the south and we have that much sleep. The wing is coming. I have my helmet. We are going to a very strong wing and then you have to find a good cell combination. Back of the World Ocean Race. Dong Fong race team with celebrations. Finished leg seven in second place. Charles Cordrelia taking his trophy and the champagne and of course the Chinese flag there as well along with the Brazilian flag. Itajaí being the home of the finish line here as the Volvo Ocean Race continues. We have not got to the end yet, but a very welcome rest is waiting for these sailors here still out in the water. And for these two teams that have finished today because leg seven over 7,600 hundred miles of some of the toughest conditions that we've certainly seen. But this is all about one thing, the scoreboard. How are we doing here? So let's take a little bit of a look here, Conrad. What are the big movements? Well, the big movements here are Team Brunel. First off, this was the team that won the race, it, as you said, and absolutely cleared the decks. It took every single point that was available on this leg, from the bonus point for the win, bonus point for Cape Horn, the double whammy at the, at the finish there. Uh, well done. So big move from sixth to third for Team Brunel. But the key thing here is the top two positions have inverted. Assuming, of course, with the caveat, that Turn the Tide on Plastic comes in ahead 
of Team Maverick. So, still a lot to play for, lots of questions out there, but the big moves are third to six for Team Brunel with this fantastic win and the potential for Dong Fong Race Team to upend the scoreboard. And finally, finally, get his place uh, at, the, at the top end there. So we just saw um, Bauer Becken congratulating Caroline Brower there, uh, but frankly, if Di Kafari makes it into Itajai before Xabi Fernandez, then Charles Cordori had better be there with a bottle of champagne, a box of chocolates, and a big smile to say thank you. Well, two boats finished, Team Brunel taking the win, Dong Fong Race Team in second place. The next boat that will be coming across the line is Team Axonabel. Simeon Team Point boat is around about 200 miles down from the finish line. <coughs> Excuse me. And then a little bit down from there, turn the tide on plastic, still coming back up. And that's an important boat to watch because Mafre, like you were saying, will be looking to reel in Di Kafari. We know that Turn the Tide on Plastic had a little bit of a problem with their uh, mast, but they seem to be back up to speed. Likewise, Team Axinabel, they had a little bit of problems. They're looking after their boat well. They are up to speed. And earlier on today, I called up with Luke Malloy on board to hear what the race was like for them. Uh, there's quite a lot to do on board. Um, we just got the latest weather in and we've uh, found out that the hour stop that we did to kind of check out the damage that we have on our keel box has kind of cost us another day um, on our ETA into the finish. It's a bit of a shame, a bit of a blow for the guys and girls on board, but um, you know, we take it in our stride. We have a good lead on the guys behind us. Um, fortunately for us and unfortunately for them, that high pressure system has swallowed them up so um, but there is quite a lot of work to do to the boat we had a uh, quite a rough trip through the southern ocean and then subsequently past Cape Horn um, and the boat's taken a bit of a beating so um, you know the shore crew guys have definitely got their hands full to get the back uh, ship shape. Well you mentioned the the boat taking a little bit of a beating how about the crew I mean how are you guys holding up physically? The crew's taking a beating as well. Um, you know, I think a lot of us have a lot of cuts and bruises on our hands, um, which we're trying to deal with now. The, the conditions are a bit drier. And, uh, you know, myself personally got washed off the wheel a few times and have hurt my back and ribs. Um, you know, Nikolai's broken his nose. Simeon smashed his cheekbone. Um, there's quite a few, you know, injuries on board just from the rough conditions, basically, and the... Uh, the water and waves um, wreaking havoc with people trying to get around the deck. And, but we'll get, get to shore and get them all fixed up as soon as possible. And has it been a chance to dry out the boat? Well, unfortunately for us, you know, the conditions have been good for, for drying the boat out. But because we've had our problem with uh, the keel box where we blew the, the doors out, that um, it's been leaking through the top of the box. So we've had a constant sort of 30 minute watch system of sponging out the build so constantly wet down there but um you know it's it's only a few days to go so and this leg obviously emotionally and physically has been a bit of a rough ride for everybody i'm wondering whether conversation has started to turn to the hot showers and the warm food waiting for you guys on shore yeah we've definitely been talking about you know uh what type of food we're looking forward to when we finish the leg um we've been talking to martin trying to get some local input on uh you know, restaurants and things. We've been giving Martine a little bit of a hard time about all the media commitment she's going to have because she is a big, big deal in Brazil. And um, unfortunately, all she seems to want to be focused on is getting to the beach and having some time off. Um, and I think uh, a lot of us would probably like to join her in that and put this leg behind us. Team Max and Abel going to be the next boat to cross the finish line and their latest ETA is going to be Thursday in the early hours of the morning. But the tracker at the moment is live so you can keep up to date with all the movements coming in. Well, we've seen Team Brunel across the finish line. We've seen Dongfong Race Team take second place. But of course, it is impossible not to forget what Leg 7 will mean for the Volvo Ocean Race going forward. John Fisher sadly lost at sea from Sun Hung Kai Scallywag in the Southern Ocean. And the tributes have been pouring in and it's been amazing to see how the sailing community, the fans of the Volvo Ocean Race, have been touched deeply by the loss of John Fisher. And we wanted to leave you now with a tribute from the team, Sun Hung Kai Scallywag, about John Fisher, somebody for them that will be missed dearly.
I suppose just the experience, you know, sailing in the cold day after day, the relentlessness of uh, the weather, um, you know, it's grinding, really grinding, and it, it you know, makes you think long and hard about some of the things you do in your life and your mental state and everything else. And I think high light and low light is, is that, the weather and the conditions, you know, blasting along at 30 knots is magic, you know. He was incredibly happy. He, was, he looked incredibly fit, he had a big smile on his face. He was just enjoying the experience of a lifetime ambition of sailing around the world in the Volvo Ocean Race. Fish was an amazing guy. He was incredibly patient as a teacher. He was really good with the younger people on board the boat. He would teach them how to do things better, how to do things smarter, how to sort of think ahead of the game. He was also great company. Happy family folks day, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He could talk about sailing, he could talk about anything in the world. And he was also one of the most safety conscious people. He was always thinking about how do we make sure the boat is safer, the crew is safe, the welfare of the people on board. And he was really just the most thorough gentleman I've had the pleasure to sail with. Um, hope everything's going well, mate, and um, hope you have a wonderful time. Happy Valentine's Day to Kirsten, the woman that makes me the man I am, oh. and for uh, supporting me with everything I do. So, uh, thank you very much. I suppose where I grew up and growing up with the love of sailing and watching the Whitbread start, you know, every four years out of the Solent. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you always dream of doing, and whether you ever get the chance is, uh, is another thing. You know, if, if you're lucky enough to get the chance to do, uh, do a race like this, everyone should uh, grab it, I think. You know, it's not, it isn't for everyone, but you should always challenge yourself. <laughs> 